Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome to Automa Chef or Automa Chef. Oh, to uh, yeah. Uh, this is a game that I'm really excited to play because I've been waiting for this for so, so, so long. Um, it. How do I even describe this? It's, it's like if you were to take Factorio and combine it with food. That's what this game is basically all about. It's two of my favorite things. It's Factorio, or Satisfactory, basically any factory builder game, and food. And of course, saying it's your favorite, one of your favorite things is food is kind of like a nicer way of saying you're just a bit fat. So, we're gonna take a look at this game. Um, basically, it has two modes. Contracts mode is basically the kind of main mode. Campaign is a bit more like a uh, tutorial. Uh, definitely recommend playing it because it does actually show you a lot of the um, the basics of the game. You do need to get through a few levels of that. Uh, so that you just kind of have an idea of like all of the different mechanics involved uh, and then going into contracts to then unlock things as you go. There are a few issues with this game and I hope that they do patch that as we go along. But that being said, uh, we're going to hop straight into contracts mode so I can kind of show you how this game is played. So, we're gonna go into a company that I've already made before called Buttocks. Because who doesn't love just the wholesome taste of Buttocks? Uh, so, this is basically how the contracts mode works is you pick up a contract, which will show you a couple of recipes and uh, the basic layout of the map. Um, and there are different restaurants as well that you, you unlock more as you go along. So just browsing through the contracts here, see which one we want to pick up. I think we'll go with uh, this one because this is kind of easy and it kind of shows you a bit of the basics. I gotta say, loading times in this game are really, really, really quick. I'm not even running this off an SSD, I don't think anyway. I don't think this is installed on my SSD. Probably not. Uh, so these are the objectives. We've got 30 dishes to complete. Uh, deliver a meal to a food critic. So that will come up at some point and use 200 ingredients or fewer. So we want to be as efficient as possible. And that's kind of the core of the game is just want to be as efficient as possible. So we want to see how to build things uh, or how to make recipes, I should say. Uh, these are the recipes for each uh, dish. So we've got a cheeseburger, we've got a side salad. All right, so fairly simple things. One issue I can already tell you about here from the recipe screen is it doesn't tell you what to do at each stage. Some of it's self-explanatory, like, okay, raw patty to cook patty, you need something to cook it on, but what do you use to cook it on? You know, maybe a little icon or something here would actually make that a little easier, uh, because you just don't, sometimes you don't know which machine does what. Uh, so that's the thing that you kind of need. Uh, side salad is kind of the same thing. So uh, let's, let's go through each of the steps. So we need an assembler to make um, the individual things. I think that's the best way of putting it. So, this will make our cheeseburger. No, actually, this will make the salad. Let's make that the salad, and we'll make this the cheeseburger. Okay, so then we need to... So, this is the output area. This is where you deliver your, um, your completed dishes. So, we're going to need that. And you can also take these robotic arms and rotate them. So, you can have that deliver left. So, you can see the arrow is going to output that way. Which is exactly what we need. So, uh, right, we're going to need a grill to cook our patties, and we're going to need dispensers to put out all those ingredients. So, do it that way, I think. Let's just, that needs to be. So, this will be raw patties, and this will be uh, burger buns. I've just noticed one issue, because we also don't have a lot of space on this map, so this is a bit, a little bit tricky. I think what I could do, put that one there, and then we'll have this here. Actually, wait, this, yeah, this here. And we need a food processor, because that's going to slice up the cheese that we need. So, cheese will be output here. Um, and then we'll just use conveyor belts. Put that conveyor belt there. And we need a robotic arm to that to the right. So now that we've done that, we need a smart robotic arm. 
uh, only one of them on there. So the smart robotic arm will basically filter out the items. So we don't want it to be taking the raw patties off the grill as soon as they're put there. So we need a cooked patty filter so it'll only take the cooked ones out. So that's the basics of a uh, cheeseburger. We've got cheese, patties, and a bun. And that's pretty much good to go. The next thing we need is a salad. So this should work just fine, I think, but we need a bunch of dispensers. Uh, just put conveyor belts. So I need carrots. I need lettuce. And I need tomatoes. So there we go. So that, that'll do all of those things. But of course we don't want to waste uh, ingredients. But I'll show you what happens. Just, you know, when we start it up. Anytime now. There we go. So ingredients will just pop out. And there's no orders. So this is kind of just a waste. Because nothing's being ordered. And we're just producing food. So it is wasting a lot of power. You can see the power usage is spiking massively there. And... Yeah, we're using up a lot of ingredients to do that. So while this could work, if people are ordering things as they go, um, it isn't really the most efficient way. So we need to fix that. So what we can do is put an order reader. We can get two of those. And we get one for the side salad. So basically what that does is it lets the, uh, the machines know when to do their things. So a little bit of programming here. Do that. And that, so the dispensers will dispense one each. All right, and then we just connect that up to the assembler to assemble one salad each time there's a new order. So these can have a maximum of four attached at once, but you can have more than one. So if I want to, I can even put another order reader down uh, and we'll have that on the side salads as well. And we can set that up to control the food processor to on when an order is pending. Yeah. Uh, I can even set that to anything else, basically. So, yeah, that's slightly more efficient there. And then the cheeseburger, we can do the same thing. And have that turn on only. So, same with the grill, because the grill does use quite a bit of electricity. It is an uh, electric grill, after all. We'll just set to uh, one each. And that should be good to go. I can even get another order reader. The cheeseburger. And do that. One time. And that. Our order is pending. And uh, yeah, that should be good to go. In fact, just to save a bit of power. Turn on for three seconds. Should be enough to get it running. And Actually... Maybe extend that up to eight seconds. Just so there's enough time for uh, the cheese to come out. We can, of course, tweak all of these things. Uh, but generally speaking, that is kind of how you want to do things. It does look quite complicated now, especially with all the cables going up and down. But this will probably be the best way of doing this. Speed things up a little bit and just wait. You can even see that now the power usage is very minimal. Um, it only powers up when there's actually stuff to be being ordered. And yeah, eight seconds on the uh, food processor is actually enough, because it's just enough time for the cheese to go in there and get processed, so that is actually plenty of time. You can even shorten that down, down, down to about six seconds even. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, this is, this is fine. The only real slowdown is the grill takes five seconds to cook a patty. Um, and you kind of have to wait for that. But other than that, this is going pretty smoothly, using very few ingredients, uh, delivering quite a lot of dishes, and our power usage is like half of what it was. So overall, it's going well. No idea where the food critic is, though. So 
So yeah, you can kind of see it, it actually looks really nice. You can zoom in to see the machines at work. I will say the animations look like they're running at a lower frame rate. Just the way the arms move, it's just sort of like... It looks like there's less frames in those animations than anything else, so it doesn't look as smooth. Although that might be intentional, I'm not really sure. But I do like the look of these little light bulbs, aside, like, you know, whether things are switched on or not. But yeah, no food critic. Oh, it came up at the end there. Okay. Well, we deli delivered everything, and that is basically the core game. Um, so I could end it off here and say that that's it, but let's try one more level. And uh, let's see what else have we got here. As prize, not a huge amount of new contracts. We can unlock more machines as well. This is only available in the uh, contracts mode. You unlock machines as you go. Um, I want the long robotic arms, stacking arms. Uh, we've also got conveyor grills. That could be really handy. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get both of these. Advanced assembler. Uh, a storage unit as well. Could uh, do a storage tank and a pump as well. So just spending, you know, cash. There's also disasters, certain levels have chances of certain things happening, like uh, machine breakdowns, fires, other things. <laughs> Alright, let's try this one. This one uh, is uh, Burger and Fries, but we've got new machines to try out, so we can actually see how those affect anything. Alright, so, this might actually work out quite well, because there's very, very, very few things. Uh, very, very little space, I should say. So, hopefully, we can just do the fryer like that. This will be a potato. Oh, right, we need to uh, process that. Dude, that should be enough. Let's just see if this works. I just want to test this out. Because I've never used these before. So we should get a potato coming out. There it is. And then we get our wedges. And then there's the fryer. And there's fried potato wedges. That's a lot faster than the deep frying machine. Look at that! It's already done. Okay. So that is that's really good. Really, really good. Um so now we just need an assembler. For the burgers. We might not even need that now I think about it, because they won't exit the grill uh, until they're actually done. So... That might actually work in our favour. We can now have very, very short distance burger produ producers. We don't need these smart arms anymore. Oh wait, that's not looking for. I need a patty. And that needs a burger bun. So I'm genuinely don't know because I've never used this before. Um The only thing would be the the cheese. But that's you know, that's fixable. We got our food processor. And there we go. So again, we're gonna have the order readers, and that will do fries, and that one will do the cheese bag. So, potato, thingy. So that will do one time, that will do one time, and so food processor I think we're gonna do 
Turn on for six seconds. And the convection prior is... 10 seconds. Let's just try that. And then we'll do the same for here. Uh, we're gonna need another water reader as well. I'm thinking 10 seconds would be enough, because it takes 5 seconds for the dispenser to push out an ingredient, another 5 seconds to cook, so that should be fine. Hopefully. And, um, yeah, we'll just do all those. One time. One time. Turn on for 6. Okay. Let's see if this works. So these... Let's just have a look. These are... Very expensive. <laughs> compared to these. These are a thousand. A thousand each. Whereas these are six thousand. Apparently it's a major fire hazard. But, uh, you know... Yeah, this is costing 50,000. This is the entire setup costing 50,000 compared to what it was before, where it was 30,000. So, yeah, it's a bit, a, yeah, bit of a difference, that. Not sure if it uses more um, energy that way. Not significantly more from the looks of it. Alright, I can see a problem. This processor here is stopping. So I'm going to need to turn that up to 8. I'm probably going to do that on uh, this one here as well. So just give it a little bit more time to get that last little bit out. It might not be completing it in time, that's all. But so far so good. This is far more efficient already. I mean, it's that little bit faster. We're using less power with the robotic arms, and it's an overall smaller machine. So I'm thinking this will improve the score somewhat. Just to speed things up a little bit here and just keep an eye out for any hitch hitches in the system. Hitches? Is that the word? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if that's right. Interesting that the cheese stops there, though. That's very odd. It just sort of stops on that conveyor belt for no apparent reason. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe that's related to the food processor stopping, so I'm going to up that to 10 seconds and see if that happens again. I'm just very curious as to why it's doing that. So, let's see. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's the reason. It's just stopping at the very end of the food processor, so that needs to be like 9 seconds. Just like, an, like even just half a second extra to just get it out of the way. It just looks really weird. I've not noticed that before. There we go. We're bug hunting. Hunting slight little bugs. In the game. Um, I have noticed another thing here as well. So the convection fryer is stopping just a little early. Um, and I think it's just because of the, the speed that the potatoes take to process. Uh, that might be why that's happening. So, it's just stopping again. The, yeah, the usual, really. 
But yeah, sort of troubleshooting the machine as it is. Yeah, it seems like that's that, that's just how the game goes, really. It, it, this is the entire game. You build a factory, and then you make it better, and then you keep trying to make the make it better, and that's really it. <laughs> um, I mean, there's not really much more to say other than that. It is that is a, the entire the entire core concept of the game. I mean, there's still way more parts and way more recipes and things. So this is just the very basic sort of stuff. Um, I mean, I haven't even shown you some of the more complex stuff, like how to make combo meals, for example. Or how to do... Even just hot wings, right? Doing hot wings for the first time is genuinely difficult. And that's one of the medium difficulty recipes. So, yeah, the, the game has a lot of complexity to it. We are using a lot of power. I don't know if we're actually going to hit that power limit. Because we haven't even reached rush hour yet. Um, I think this new setup is faster, but it is a lot more energy intensive. Because it's using the same amount of electricity to do the same job as the, the old system was. But we might just barely make it. Oh, you're kidding me. It was 400 watts under. So 91%. I think that's the highest I've ever gotten. But that's just a very, very, very quick look at Automachef. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's honestly brilliant. Go and have a look at it on Steam. It's uh, out right now, actually. It came out a couple of days ago. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. So go and check that out. It's published by Team17, who provide me a code for the game as well. So a uh, big thank you to them for that. And... Um, yeah, I think like it's it's definitely a very good game. It just needs there's a couple of little things like you know missing tool tips. Um, uh, the recipes can be better explained, but otherwise, uh, it's definitely very addictive, and I'm certainly hooked on it. So, thank you guys very much for watching. My name is Panzer, and I'll see you next time.